And everything I own don't fill up high. Don't you worry about the way I pass. All I care about is getting back real soon. A goodbye kiss is all I need from you. Cause I'm carrying your love with me. West Virginia down to Tennessee. I'll be moving with the good Lord. See, carrying your love with me is my strength. Holding on every minute that I had to be. I'll have everything I ever need. Carrying your love with me. Hey, hey, you too. Happy beginning of the week. It's a Tuesday. Me and the girls are out here going for a little hike. And I just decided to bring you with me. So I hope you're having a great beginning of the week, guys. Um, it's gloomy and doomy around here in Colorado today, right now. But I'm going to come out here and see if it might make for... A good sunset but it's not looking that way but I'm stoked to have you guys here I'm carrying your love with me song made me think of you guys and the YouTube algorithm <laughs> so, or lack thereof but I just wanted to make a segment here on this Tuesday and talk a little bit about Anxiety and depression, something that affects us all, guy. Um, <clears throat> you know, it's all right to be have anxiety and depression, especially in these tough economic times. And on gloomy days like today. But, you know, a great remedy for depression, you know what I'm going to say is get outside and explore. Because, guys, I'm telling you, every time I'm in a bum mood or feeling down, I say, just get outside and go for a hike. Do something. And I'm telling you, every time I get outside and go for a hike, I'll find something super neat or find something on the ground or uh, experience a new set of woods or a new canyon that I haven't explored before. And it always, you know, the creator always provides. So... <clears throat> There's always some sort of light. And then at the end of the day, I'm say, I always say, that's all you need to do is just get out there and do it. And, you know, I know a lot of you guys probably live near the city. And that's okay. But right outside of your city limits, guys, I'm sure there's beautiful places. You know, lakes. If you're near the beaches or rivers. I mean, every state's got rivers and creeks, guys. Those are beautiful. Just get out and go exploring. Go find a place where you've never been and explore. And there's no telling what you're going to find. Like, for instance, right now I'm going to take you and show you. Look at that elk scat. That's a big pile of elk scat. <clears throat> but <clears throat> right now is the Colorado mud season. And it is the most depressing time in Colorado. Because the sun, the snow has melted, but the everything's still dead and gloomy and gray. And we get days like today where it's just the sun's not out. See the sun up there? The sun's not coming out. It's gloomy. It's cold. It's got a little windy. And, uh, you know, these are tough days. So I'm sure everyone has them, you know. Life is a roller coaster. There's ups and there's downs. So, I mean, you're going to... Everyone has down times and tough times in their life. I'm sure you've, you yourself have had some tough times. You know, no one has an easy ride in this life, guys. Nobody. And a lot of people say we are living in hell on earth and there's something great that awaits us beyond this. So this is just a test. So that's why it's so tough. 
that we're going through the test right now. That right there. But <clears throat> I just want to come live. And I know this is going to sound crazy, but how YouTube saved my life this winter. Um, how y'all doing over there? And it's true, you know, uh, this is the, I've lived out here for four winters now and in, in this area on this property. And it's incredibly long and tough, if you, especially by yourself. Um, but being by yourself builds character. But this year I've had YouTube and let me tell you, you know, it's like having a, a rich YouTube's like having a rich, pretty girlfriend model. That you're always trying to impress, but she's really not that into you. That's how <laughs> that's how I explain the YouTube algorithm. And uh, shout out YouTube, though. But you know, it's like chasing the dragon. It's constant. You're constantly working, working. YouTube's always making you work. You got to be consistent. And um, it really helped me out this winter. You know, getting a dark place out here by yourself. Um, but I've had this YouTube where I'm constantly making videos and trying to, um, you know, in improve and impress you guys and trying to get likes and subscribes and all that you kind of get hooked on it like any other drug but it, you know it's it's a healthy drug it's not like alcohol or drugs that's going to ruin your life um but i challenge you you know it doesn't have to be youtube youtube's the only thing i do guys you know i think you can get swallowed up into a social media whole tiktok and instagram and yada 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 all these different ones all I do is YouTube, guys. I, don't, I mean, I got a little fa Facebook account and these little accounts that I use for like, a, you know, like the marketplace just so I can buy and sell things. But I think you should simplify your life down to just a couple little social media niches and um, and just work hard on those. And um, they could be fruitful with you. I'm so close to getting monetized here. Uh, at this YouTube channel, and I think now that spring's coming, it's really going to explode. So fingers crossed. But let me show you all a little bit around. Well, yeah, YouTube's like chasing the dragon. You know, they give you a little bit. They're like, here's a little twenty thousand view video. You know, and then they get you hooked, and then you're hooked once you get that twenty thousand views. You know, it's like. <laughs> It's like doing drugs for the first time, you know, it's, you're always chasing that first time. And uh, so I got a view with Nipsey and that bull, you can scroll up in my shorts. I got that one got 20,000 and you're always chasing that 20,000 view. <laughs> wow. She can be a fickle beast, let me tell you. But... <clears throat> it's been cool though, because in an attempt to make more footage and content for you guys i've really been able to explore and find all kinds of cool stuff around here that i would have never known is around here before if i hadn't been hiking around all the time trying to come up with cool and content but as you can see it's still muddy out but the mud is drying up quick and um it won't be long and it'll be blue skies and sunny warm days around here I'm going to show you all. Those are the La Plata Mountains. And there are a mysterious set of mountains, let me tell you. A lot of people go missing in the La Plata Mountains. Currently, there's still two people for sure missing in the La Plata Mountains. David Lund and um, an older fella outside of Purgatory that disappeared this at the beginning of elk season this year. So, they sure are pretty, but can be very dangerous. As soon as spring hits, we're going to get back up there. Hey, Zoo, what do you say? What do you say, Zoo? Well, I just happen to be cutting through here, and guys, I always thought this was like just um, a pile of trash over here. But this is just an instance or an example of... Uh, being bored, nothing to do, and getting out, and then finding something super cool. And now, look, I got great content to show you guys. So, <clears throat> we're almost there. You can see it in the distance coming up. But, 
I just wanted to say thank you. Please like and subscribe. Um, I don't know if it's just growing pains or what, but people have been getting unsubscribed uh, from my channel for whatever reason. Uh, I might be a glitch in the matrix an accident. We're not going to let it get us down. And we're not going to complain about it like a lot of people do. Um, but if you don't hear from me for a little bit, that means you might have accidentally got unsubscribed. So make sure you double check. And always make sure you're subscribed and you got the notifications bell turned on. Because we're going to be going hard in the paint here with these videos. I'm not giving up, YouTube. You hear that algorithm? Not giving up. The content's going to get better and better and better. We have really cool intros. Got ideas for intros and all that coming up. But I got to show you guys this. Look at this, man. In the middle of this field. So this is state-owned Colorado state owned property owned by the state. And you know, like back in the day when farmers would die off, they wouldn't have land to um, give their, you know, like kids to give their land to when they died. So things like this would happen if the state takes over. And look at this. Look at this piece of a farm equipment guy. All these iron dinosaurs is what I call them. Look at the wheel on this thing. I mean, this is before tires, guys. So tell me what age range you think this is. I'm thinking early 1900s, we got square bolts, square nuts. I mean, that's a giveaway for late 1800s, early 1900s. And this is a plow. Look, guys, see the plow? Discs. One, two, three discs. Sorry, I thought I heard a vehicle. But it's a rumble in the distance. But look at this old yellow wheel. I bet that's lead paint on there. And this is a steel wheel. Can you imagine how rough this sucker is to run? And it hooked up to a horse. So there's the connection for the horse right there. Huh, Nipsey? Huh, the... Go get him, girl. Go look around. And look, guys. Here's a handle that adjusted, like, the, the depth, I guess, of the trenches. So this is the handle. And then here's another handle to adjust a different depth. So I think this is this depth is for that trench, and then this depth is for this trench. And you could adjust them. So I imagine a dude like standing here as the horse is being pulled, sitting here working these working these handles, digging trenches, getting pulled by a big strong mule. I imagine. But how cool is that? I mean, this could be valuable. This is just sitting in the middle of the back country of Colorado. Look at that cool disc. That was like the tail wheel that just kind of dragged behind. But look how neat all this old cool steel. See, and that's engraved in there. And that looks like L I N, maybe. Lynn. See that? But this is like when they were just engraved. So this is like a handmade. Oh, look, there's a, there's a name. McCline. See that? McCline. Engraved in there. I'm going to have to look that up. Tell me if you guys at home and you shoestring armchair detectives. See if you can look up and see what year this McCline plow is and if it's worth something. Because <laughs> I know where it's at. But I'm thinking like late 1800s early 1900s and this piece of equipment here is much newer it's got a rubber tire on it but this is a disker to disc up these old fields man it, this is much newer it's got old wood on it so maybe mid 1900s on that one but there's some way older stuff check this one out so this is a rake hay rake and what it would do is you can adjust these these rakes and it rakes it up in the lanes so it can be um, bailed up in the hay. But look at these old wagon wheels, guys. I mean, that's old. It's like a proper steel wagon wheel. Again, it's got the horse connection. That's where it connected to the horse. That's an old hay rake, y'all. Look, here's a handle here. 
Oh, cool. Still kind of works. That's super neat. It's like going back in time, y'all. Look at that old wheel. Iron dinosaurs in time, just sitting here in the middle of nowhere in this field in Colorado. I mean, you know, they say they don't make stuff like they used to. I bet you this farm equipment with a little bit of love would still work. <laughs> and this is a, a case cedar, S-E-E-D-E-R, and a disc. So this thing would disc and plant at the same time you fill this up with seeds. And it, so that's a, this is a much newer contraption as well. I'm thinking like maybe the 60s or 70s, 1960s, 1970s on that sucker. Seems awful new. <clears throat> but I mean, I feel like with new tires, this sucker would work. All these old steel parts and a little bit of lube and grease come back to life. <clears throat> Well, you too can go out and explore and find neat stuff like this in your neck of the woods, guys. I mean, there's cool history all over this country. Oh, wow, look at all these old cans. Those are like old oil cans. Some twine. Oh, cool, super old barbed wire. Texaco oil. <laughs> it's an old Texaco oil can, guys. You just puncture the top and pour the oil out. And this is super old two-strand barbed wire. This old barbed wire is super valuable. All these old planks. Here's some more Texaco oil. Oh, look at this. Look how big this sagebrush bush is, guys. So I'm six foot two. Look at that. That's like almost seven foot tall sagebrush. Sagebrush is only supposed to get knee high. That stuff is huge. And it's about to bloom come spring and it'll destroy your allergies, guys. Let me tell you, it'll make you feel like you're hung over or in a haze. It's the weirdest thing when they the sage opens up. Look at this old piece of equipment. All the sage has grown up through it like a piece of art. I think this would be a cool picture. Yeah. The way all the sage has grown up. Old disker. But look how cool that is. That sagebrush went, grew right up around this old disker. I mean, this disc would work like new if it just was able to get out of there. I'd say this is probably late 1900 or late 1800, 19, early 1900. You can tell by the square nut. Square nuts and square nail heads are usually dead giveaways of age. Like, that's old right there. But I want to say what's up, guys, on this gloomy, doomy Colorado day. I hope your day's a little bit more sunnier than this one. Man. I challenge you to go AWOL, absent without leave, guys. But before you go AWOL, you remember the lucky seven Ps. Perfect prior preparation prevents piss poor performance. Write it down. Uh, before you go out, before you go AWOL, make sure you have all your ducks in a row. Uh, make sure you prepare for any weather event. Always keep some extra food with you at least a couple days. And go out and find some cool stuff like this old farm equipment. I mean, I feel like it should be in a damn museum or something. It's just sitting out here in the middle of nowhere, rotting away, forgotten about. Like, I guarantee you, everyone that ever knew about this is dead, is dead and gone.
so they sure do have a beautiful view though don't they all these old dinosaurs but again i just wanted to thank youtube you know it's a struggle i tell you youtube's like a boot camp or something you know it's it's a constant struggle to always come up with new and interesting footage but it's good it makes you it forces you to become more creative uh you know there's a high bar set because there's a ton of channels out there so you really got to do stuff to set yourself above the rest well that's what we're going to do here today wall we're going to provide great content for you guys that it's interesting and fun and um i've been thinking about making names for the subs and i uh, got a lot of stuff coming up we're gonna get some merch going all in due time first we got to get monetized and that's next on the plate but tomorrow i'm gonna drop a really neat video a historical video so stay tuned guys Sure appreciate y'all here. Like I said, I love you. And it's you guys' nice con comments that have gotten, gotten us through this winter. Um, there's a group of you that always answer the call in the comments, and I live for you guys' comments, and I truly love y'all. And you're more than welcome to, if you ever want to come out and visit me, y'all are welcome to come out anytime. Come out this summer, we'll have a campfire and watch the shooting stars. The stars are amazing out here. Uh, well, thank you guys so much. Please like and subscribe and much love and all that. And I hope you're having a great middle of the week. And have a blessed rest of the week. Look at that sage blooming. Blessings. <laughs>